While we have all worked incredibly hard to prevent this scenario, we have also planned and prepared for it. We have a resurgence plan that we are now activating. That plan is based on everything that we have learned as a country to date about COVID-19. It's also based on what we've seen from resurgence overseas. Those plans, though, are of course based on what we know about the cases in front of us. So I will pass to Dr Bloomfield who will set out those details. Then I will share with you the decisions that have been made in response uh, through meetings with officials and also after ministers uh, convened uh, this evening and set out what it will mean for everyone. First, Dr Bloomfield. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, kia ora. So as the PM has said, we actually have four confirmed cases of COVID-19 in one family acquired from an unknown source. Uh, the first case to present was a person in their 50s who lives in South Auckland. That person was swabbed yesterday when they presented to their general practitioner with symptoms. Uh, that test was processed twice and returned positive and a second swab uh, today also returned a positive result. Uh, importantly, the person has no history of overseas travel and as per our usual protocol, we worked very closely with Auckland Regional Public Health to interview the person. Uh, we've sprung into action and in fact all those family members residing in the same household, uh, there were another six, were all tested uh, and three of the six have returned positive test results, the other three were negative. Uh, other close contacts from workplaces have already been uh, contacted and put into self-isolation and are being tested, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic. All close contacts remain in self-isolation for 14 days, regardless of their test result, uh, while casual contacts go into self-isolation and can only leave self-isolation once they return a negative test. In addition, we are working over the next few days to test all people working at our borders and in our managed isolation facilities to help us trace the possible origin of this case where we don't currently know the source. Now, there are no barriers to anyone who has cold or flu-like symptoms getting tested. Testing is free. Uh, and as I have said previously, and it's even more relevant now, if you are offered a test, please take it. In Auckland, the four community testing centres in Northcote, Grafton, Henderson and Whitty will be operating with more staff and for longer hours over coming days. The testing centres that are in Auckland and the Waitemata and counties Manukau DHBs are already preparing to receive more people and there will be further details on the Ministry website tonight. Those DHBs are also planning pop-up clinics over coming days and they will publicise locations and hours of these clinics. We will work closely with DHBs in primary care around the country to ensure additional testing capacity is available to meet the expected increase in demand from people with symptoms and I strongly encourage any New Zealander with symptoms, whether in the Auckland region or outside it, to please be tested. We have been saying for some weeks it was inevitable that New Zealand would get another case of community transmission. This is a tricky virus. We have been working on the basis that it could be at any time and been preparing for that time. That time is now. The health system is well prepared. And the important thing now is that we stop the spread of the virus in our community. As we did in the early days of the virus emerging, we need to stamp it out. There are things that every single New Zealander now needs to do. We have done these before. Continue or get back to stringent hand hygiene, washing for 20 seconds with soap and water or regular use of an alcohol-based hand gel, sneeze and cough into your elbow. If you or a family member are unwell, wherever you live in New Zealand, stay at home and seek advice from your GP or health line about getting a test. Practice physical distancing of two metres wherever possible. And most recently, our advice around the use of masks, masks, which has been updated, please consider wearing a mask in spaces or places where it is hard to physically distance. 
If you have any concerns, please seek advice from Healthline or your GP. If you have not already, please take this opportunity to download the NZ COVID Tracer app. It will be an essential tool in helping us contact you if we need to as part of our follow-up on this case. Uh, and finally, uh, our contact tracing team will of course be in contact with anyone who may be identified as a contact, whether casual or close of this case. Please be responsive if you are contacted, return the call and assist our efforts to rapidly identify and isolate and test any possible cases. The case is a wake-up call against any complacency that may have set in. We cannot afford to let this virus spread. We are working to not let it happen here. That what has happened uh, in other places that have seen resurgences like this. We have done this before and we can and will do it again. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you. As you will have heard from Dr Bloomfield, we have four cases, all in one household. More than one workplace, however, is involved. Contact tracing is underway, um, but currently we know that of those workplaces, it means that we are not talking about one distinct suburb in Auckland who may likely have been affected by those who have tested positive. You'll also have heard that our first cases still leave questions to be answered, the most important of which is tracing this case back to its original origin. The reason that is important is because when we're able to do that, we can be much more certain about tracing and isolating all close contacts. When we can't do that, it means we have to take a precautionary approach. At this stage, we have not yet been able to determine the source of these cases. There is no immediate link that we have found as yet to a managed isolation facility that we are aware of, and there is no yet known connection to any high-risk individuals such as those who work at our border. Therefore, we need to take a much more precautionary approach until we can find the source of this case and make sure that we reduce the risk of wider spread. One of the most important lessons we've learned from overseas is the need to go hard and go early and stamp out flare-ups to avoid the risk of wider outbreak. As disruptive it is, as it is, a strong and rapid health response rem remains the best long-term economic response. In line with our precautionary approach, we will be asking Aucklanders to take swift action with us. As of 12 noon tomorrow, Wednesday, August 12th, we will be moving Auckland to level three restrictions for a period of three days until midnight on Friday. These three days will give us time to assess the situation, gather information, make sure we have widespread contact tracing so we can find out more about how this case arose and make decisions on how to respond to it once we have further information. Let me set out what that means for Aucklanders and the rest of New Zealand. We are asking people in Auckland to stay home to stop the spread. This means doing the simple things that you will already be familiar with to prevent picking up the virus or passing it on to others. First, act as if you have COVID and as if the people around you have COVID. At level three, you're asked to stay at home in your bubble other than for essential movements such as going to the supermarket or local recreation. If you are in Auckland, you must work from home unless you are an essential service worker. All schools and childcare facilities in Auckland are closed as of tomorrow morning except for the children of essential service workers. And those who are involved will remember that at Level 3 we allow uh, you to access schools uh, and early childhood for uh, a Level 3 for essential service workers only. All public facilities, bars, restaurants and businesses must close by midday tomorrow. Gatherings of more than 10 people in Auckland again uh, will be restricted and are restricted again for funerals, tangihanga and wedding services only. 
And the rest of the country gatherings, of course, though, uh, I'll outline in further detail momentarily. Travelling into Auckland is prohibited unless you normally reside there and are travelling home. If you are currently in Auckland but do not normally reside there, you also can leave to go home. But we are asking you to be very conscious of your health and if you begin to display any symptoms, please get tested. We are defining the area covered as Auckland and covered by level three restrictions is the geographic boundary of the Auckland super city, which extends from Wellsford in the north to Pukekohe in the south. Police will be issuing further guidance on parameters, including roadblock use, first thing in the morning. As you will recall, all key services, supermarkets, pharmacies, medical centres, they do remain open. So food and supplies will continue to be readily available. Food delivery is also available, as you recall, at level three. Please do not rush to the supermarket tonight. You'll recall, uh, as when we were in level three on our last occasion, supermarkets will be open. There will be ample stock on the shelves. There is no reason to go out and make any purchases this evening. If you operated as an essential service under level four and level three last time, then those are the settings we revert to at level three again. If in doubt, stay at home tomorrow until you have clarity from your employer. That then brings me to the rest of New Zealand. We will be moving the rest of the country outside of Auckland to level two. This will come into place from midday tomorrow and run through till midnight on Friday. So the same period of time that we're applying restrictions for Auckland. That means social distancing applies and mass gatherings in that time will be need to be limited to 100 people. And of course, all of the other guidance you'll be used to from level two applies again as well. I know that this information will be very difficult to receive. We had all hoped not to find ourselves in this position again, but we had also prepared for it. And as a team, we have also been here before. We know if we have a plan and stick to it, we can work our way through very difficult and unknown situations. Before I finish, I want to talk briefly about some of the additional plans that we have in place. As the Director General has set out, Auckland Regional Health will be standing up a mass testing program across the region, where we will seek to test tens of thousands of people over the coming days in order to understand any potential unidentified cases in the community. It's our intention to test everyone who works at the border and everyone who works in managed isolation facilities with a focus on Auckland. We will also be undertaking wide testing of those who are symptomatic in Auckland. Please, so I ask you, don't visit your GP or a community testing station if you are perfectly well. We are seeking to test those who are symptomatic and those who are working in those high-risk areas. More details of the location of these CBACs and guidance on who should get a test we will be providing again in the morning. A final word on mask use. We now know that these can be effective in reducing the spread of COVID. If you are in Auckland, we ask that you use a mask when you are accessing essential services. For the rest of the country, we advise their use if you're in a place where social distancing is difficult. So for instance, public transport. Let me finish by saying this. While this initial three-day lockdown will mainly affect the Auckland region, I am asking the team of five million to stand ready again as well. Together we've beaten the virus before and with fast action and by acting together, we can do so again. We have come too far to go backwards. I'm asking New Zealanders to once again be strong and be kind. If you know someone in Auckland, give them a call, reach out, check that they're okay. If you are in Auckland, please make sure that your neighbours are okay, ensure they're looked after, and that they have the supplies and the support they need. We know what to do. We know what to do because we've successfully done it before. 
please stay home if you're in Auckland. Be vigilant. We will get through this.